So, if you want to understand how polyvagal theory works mm -hmm. with EP, you have to go on a bit of a trip with me. So there's this thing called the vagus nerve, mm -hmm. and it's a long involved process, but the bottom line, what the vagal nerve does, it runs from the, down in the gut, mm -hmm. up past the vocal cords, up into the base of the brain. Mm -hmm. It's mostly an up system, 80% up, 20% down. Now, its job, it has one major job, and its major job is to ask the following question. Am I safe? Mm. That's what it does. That's what it does for reptiles mam and mammals and human beings. Now, if uh, it, the nerve says it's not, I'm not safe, that engages fight-flight. Mm -hmm. Now, when most people think about fight-flight, they think, and if I, ask, I go around and I ask people this, they say, well, if you think of a car metaphor, mm -hmm. what, what, what would you think of? They say, people mostly say, foot on the gas, sure. which is what the right answer that most people say, but that's not actually the right answer. It's actually the wrong answer. What the correct metaphor is not foot on the gas, but foot on the off the brake. Mm. What the vagus nerve does, and this is just straight medical science, is called the vagal braking system. It keeps the um, a brake on the heart because the heart, left to its own device, would, would race, and it's a, it's a it's an amazing engine. Mm. So it says you're safe. You don't need to go super fast. So it, it calms down. So here's what's interesting. If you're in, if you're healthy, and you're feeling safe, the brake is on, heart beats 72 beats per minute, whatever it is, slow and regular. You you perceive yourself in danger. Foot comes off the brake, heart starts to race. You go into fight or flight or freeze, until you believe you're not in danger anymore. Foot comes back on the brake. It turns out, according to Stephen Porges's research, that if you uh, uh, have all kinds of pro if you if you abuse children in childhood if you have borderline personality disorder a whole s series of things if you traumatize people one of the things that happens is you just dis you disrupt this vagal breaking system break vagal you disrupt this vagal breaking system mm -hmm. and what that means is that the person can't regulate their affect as well they become dysregulated much easier and it takes them a lot longer to re-regulate. Sound a little like trauma to you, Peter? Sure. Is right. So that's that's interesting. And then the next piece of it is, it turns out, how do you measure this? And the way you measure this is through uh, something called um, heart rate variability, which basically is uh, it's a measure of how much the heart rate varies. You actually do not want your heart to always beat exactly the same. If that happens, it's actually really bad for you. So the more variability, the healthy you are. The more variability, the better your heart, the, the, mm -hmm. this vagal break. And, and HRV can be easily measured. Easily measured. Mm -hmm. It turns out that um, back in the, I think it was the late 90s, early, early 2000s, um, TFT did a bunch of studies mm -hmm. using heart rate variability. So what they basically did was they would measure people's heart rate variability. Mm -hmm. They would have them then focus on traumatic memories. They'd tap on it and get their all their SUD scores down to, you know, to zero. Mm -hmm. Then they'd re remeasure their heart rate variability, and they say, and they'd be a lot better. Be, the heart rate variability would go up, mm -hmm. means they're healthier. At the time, polyvagal theory wasn't around, so nobody ever made the connection. But I, my, and nobody else really has done the study yet. But my suggestion here is that um, it may be that when we tap on people, yes, we're working with the amygdala, but we're also maybe helping this this vagal breaking system that helps people feel deeply safe. The other thing that's interesting about it is if you work with energy work, you know that when people get tapped on or whatever whatever it is they're doing, when they think of the memory, they, they just go, yeah, it just doesn't bother me anymore. It's just right. kind of gone. There's this uh, self-generated cognitive shift right. that so many of our clients are, are Right, reporting. they get the cognitive shift, but that's mm -hmm. almost after the fact, right? Because mm -hmm. what they sort of report is, they kind of look at you quizzically and go, uh, I don't mm -hmm. feel this thing in my body anymore. Right, I've had clients even say, I don't even know why I thought this was a big deal it's, after a, a whole session of right. tapping. It's yeah. gone. Just yeah. like it's some very base level, and the thing that fascinated me about polyvagal theory is mm -hmm. it's so not in the cortex. It's b way below. It's even below the amygdala. It's so down deep in the bone. Mm -hmm. There's. It's not about words. 
it just changes. So experientially, it makes me wonder again, wow, if this thing that kind of comes up now just says I'm safe, and it's so below the kind of verbal mm -hmm. thing, this is at a reptilian level, really, at mm -hmm. some level, mm -hmm. all of a sudden you're safe, and now you can tell, and then you're, the brain is free to do all kinds of other meaning making. Mm -hmm. So that's the, you know, my additional take on I've, why I think, uh, how I think this might be working. Wonderful.